Hello, my friends. Good morning. May the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Living God, open the understanding so that everyone of those who take part of this broadcast may be enlightened, may understand the Word of God, and may be or have the wisdom to obey and reap the fruits of the obedience. Otherwise, if they don't obey, they will reap the fruits of the disobedience. And as a result, they will suffer the consequences. Well, we were talking about the marriage, the marriage, the holy marriage, the institution that is the most holy in the whole world is family. The marriage is the unity between the husband and his wife, which is a type, a symbol of the unity of God and his church. <laughs> it's nice. So, see, what wonderful thing. God, God, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, gave his life for the bride, which is the church. The church that is holy. He gave his life for the church. And the church give its life for her Lord, for her husband. So both become just one. Jesus the head and the body is the church. This is symbolized also by the husband and the wife. The man re represents God. The body, the body represents the woman which is what completes a human being. So, God is represented by the head. The woman represents the body. We have this analogy that is very interesting because you understand why. Why? What for? What's the reason that there is this institution of family. So when the home is destroyed, when there is a divorce, which God hates, the Bible says that God hates divorce because he knows that separation will bring the outcomes, the horrible, cruel outcomes for the rest of their life. So this... This symbology, when man gets married with his wife and they form the body, that body, that home, that marriage, that, that marriage symbolizes the marriage of God with men, with the woman with the church, the church represented by the body. Well, so that there is no divorce, there is no separation, it's necessary what? It's necessary to have sacrifice from him to her as well from her to him. If there is no sacrifice from both of them, if there is no surrender, then the marriage is not complete. The, the children will suffer the consequences. Well, let's see now what happened in the Garden of Eden for you to understand 
why men have to sacrifice for his wife and the wife has to sacrifice for her husband. And sacrifice all. Sacrifice your will. Sacrifice your thoughts, your opinions. Everyone has to sacrifice for each other. If there is no sacrifice from both of them, there is no marriage. And we saw that all the way in the beginning of humankind. Back then, when God, he came to, to the Garden of Eden to walk with Adam and Eve at the end of the afternoon, then they were not there. They were hidden. Why? Because they sinned. They disobeyed the word of God. So, they hid themselves because they found out that they were naked. Before, they, they were not naked. They, they didn't see that there was nakedness. But we seen their eyes were open for malice, for evil. And then they hid themselves. What did God do? After God condemned both of them, men and women, he, he opened a door for reconciliation, for communion with God and human being. God then, he made tunics of skin. The Bible says that the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Well, for God to do the tunics of skin, he had to kill an animal. He had to sacrifice an animal. Adam and Eve, they were clothed with what? With fig leaves. But the fig leaves, it dissolves. But the skin of an animal, it doesn't. It's not that easy. And then God made tunics of skin to cover them both of their nakedness. So, this animal that was killed, whose skin was clothing the sin of Adam and Eve, or better saying, the nakedness of Adam and Eve, it is a kind of Jesus. It represents Jesus, the symbol of Jesus. What God would do in the future, 2,000 years, he sent his son to die, to die, with the purpose to cover the sin, to wash the sin, to make it to disappear the sin of human being. But only those that believe in him, only of those who believe in him. Jesus did die for everyone, but only those who believe in him, they are, let's say, covered of their nakedness. They are free from their sin. Well, see that this also is a kind of marriage. It's a kind of um, the access, the right that the human has to have the communion with God, which is what happened with Adam and Eve when they sinned, they were expelled from the garden. They were cast away. Though God covered them, yet, so that Adam and Eve could have access to God, then God made the offering. So, the first fruits, the tithe, the offering, the sacrifice, 
they they were not needed while there was no sin in the world because when there is no sin man had access to God directly there was no need for an intercessor there would not need a sacrifice they were clean they were per perfect they were perfect like God is perfect like God is perfect so there was this communion among, among them but when there was sin there was separation God was separated from them and then God institute the sacrifice he had to kill an animal he had to make death to come in took a life of an animal to take his skin to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve the sin well the same thing happens today without Jesus there is no way for a person to have access to God <laughs> Jesus represented was represented by that animal that was killed whose skin covered the nakedness of Adam and Eve the same thing happens today Jesus he continued being the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world that takes away the sin of people who believe in him but to believe in Jesus you have to give your life you have to surrender your life you have to get married with him in other words you have to get together with him then you ask but how can I get married with Jesus if I don't see him I don't feel I don't touch him the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is the other comforter that comes to bring to make it possible that the person is washed in the blood of Jesus without seeing him the person can be cleansed of their sin without feeling the person can be saved without touching the Lord Jesus without physically touching him so the Holy Spirit is the guide of those who want to be united with God to turn to God to have communion with God to enter in God's presence they want to enter in God's presence only with the Lord Jesus so after the sin it was instituted the offering tithe sacrifice because these elements they bring the person close to God they bring the human being close to God without Jesus who is the offering of God you don't enter in the presence of God like it's written Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me except through me my life who was surrendered to those who believe but those who believe also they don't believe just in a theory oh yes I believe in Jesus no there it comes the offering you have to offer yourself you have to give yourself like in a marriage a marriage the holy marriage is a total surrender from one to another for example when I was a fiance for Esther my parents went to Esther's parents house to talk to them so I gave my word I gave my word to her I made my vow with her there 
I want to get married, I want to take you from your parents. And she did the same before my parents. So, our promise we did to each other. The marriage came just after. That's it. Then, we surrender our life one to another. First, we gave our word. But now, once we are on the altar, we sacrifice a life one to another. And this, let's say, this action is the kind of wedding with the Lord Jesus. For you to be one spirit with Him, you have to surrender, surrender a hundred percent, unconditionally. It's all for all. So, Jesus said, those who love your father or your mother more than me is not worthy of me. Look at the marriage. Those who love their child more than me is not worthy of me. See? Can you see? And you don't see those who love your husband and your wife is more than me. He doesn't say that. Because both, they are one. In the case of a marriage, they are one. So, Jesus, he's showing us that there is no way for you to present yourself before the Father without Him. Without Him be your offering. Without you believing in Him and being one with Him to give access to the presence of the Father. It's nice. Maybe you don't understand very well what this message is about because for sure you need to be born of God. You need to be spiritual, to have a spiritual nature, to receive the Holy Spirit. It's not enough to say, I accept Jesus as my Savior. This is easy. I did that many times and nothing happened. Only when I let go of my life and gave myself a hundred percent spirit, soul, and body, then, yes, he also surrendered a hundred percent to me and he came to dwell in me, in the person of the Holy Spirit. And that's what he wants to do with you, my friends. So, all your life destroyed, all your life that is rotten, all your life that, let's say, that became like powder, it can be rebuilt, and only will be rebuilt the day that this powder, even though it's useless, this useless life may be placed 100% on the altar. And then comes the offering. And then comes the offering. And then comes the tithe, the sacrifice that we always say in the church, in the UCKG, when a person goes to the altar with all their strength, with all that they are, all that they have, all that they want to be or have, when they go to the altar with all or nothing, they are testing God. My God, truly, here is my life. It's here, my life, as a living offering on your altar. And I do that in the name through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So through Jesus, we marry with the Father. We become one with God. This is what we read here in the verse. Those who get married, who become one with the Spirit, 
is one spirit with him. The one who joins with the Lord, who married the Lord, is one spirit with him. What wonderful thing. It's God in you. You in God. So, it's one person. Obviously, father, mother, children, money, the things of this world, the material things, all of that, they, they are left behind. He becomes all in our life. This is what means marriage. When we get married, we become one, one body. When we get married with God, when we sacrifice our life, when we sacrifice all our being, we are proving with our offering, with our life, the offering that we bring on the altar represents the soul of the offering giver. So you must have this consciousness that offering is not money. Money is not offering. God needs money. Does he need gold? Anything? He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need anything. But when a person place their life on the altar, they don't place half. It's all. The altar is the place for sacrifice. When there is no offering, true offering, there is no altar. The altar only receives the all of the person, their whole life, as was the case of Jesus. Jesus, he surrendered completely so that we could have life and life abundant. Tomorrow we are going to talk more about this and Esther will be with me in the program 9.30 on the UG TV, the TV temple, and we are going to talk more about that so that we are going to remove the doubts because many people, unfortunately, they do not understand and they think that offering is money and money is offering. Nothing to do one with the other. Offering represents your life, your soul. So if your offering is useless, it's because you are not giving your offering, truly, which is your life, and not surrendering it, your life wholeheartedly with all your strength, with all your soul and your thought. There's no offering, there's no altar to receive your offering. With God, our, our surrender, for him to receive our offering, there is the need of the altar. Without the altar, there is no value in that offering. The offering only receives the true offering. That's why Jesus said, when you bring your offering to the altar and you remember that you have something to, against your brother, go there, leave your offering before the altar, Go back and go to reconcile with your brother. Then you come and then you present your offering on the altar. Because the altar do not accept an offering which is useless, which is with defect. No, the altar has to be, the, the offering of the altar has to be complete. The whole life. It's all for all as it's done when there is a marriage, all for all, in a marriage, right? Tomorrow we'll be back talking about the subject. God bless you. May the Holy Spirit cover each one of you of the understanding, because there's no point to know the word if 
there is no understanding on the word of God. Isn't it? You may have a huge knowledge of the Bible, but if you don't have the understand of it, you remain the same way. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.